but they are considered the widow's son. They have a saying, is there no justice for the widow's son? I go on, quote, uh, no, this is uh, some of his teaching here. It says, so when a Freemason is called the widow's son, it means they are the sons of the goddess. Think about that. They have become sons of the goddess. I couldn't figure out what was going on. Every ruling, everything I did, it didn't make any difference. And then, it, duh, this thing's all been decided in advance. It's all a big show, just like it was in Jezebel's day, because these boys, they're going to go with the babe. That's the way it is. In America, and there's no preachers preaching against it. Because half of their elders are also masons and they'll be out of a job. The goddess has been worshipped under many names in the mystery religions. Isis, Diana, Estar. Now, in the Da Vinci Code, that's a book that sold millions, it says on page 624, Christianity was really goddess worship, and Mary Magdalene was really the head of the early church. And that Orthodox Christianity made the Bible up to pervert real truth that Christianity was really goddess worship, In the quote. I'm talking about millions of people have read this. They believe it. Going on, it says, The Priori's tradition of perpetuating goddess worship is based on a belief that powerful men in the early church, Christian church, con conned the world by propagating lies that devalued the female and tipped the scales in favor of the masculine. Prioris believed that Constantine and his male successors successfully converted the world from matriarchal uh, paganism to patriarchal Christianity by waging a campaign of propaganda that demonized the sacred feminine, obliterating the goddess from the modern religious uh, religion forever. End quote. This is out of the book called the Da Vinci Code, read by millions. It is all. It's just reflecting what is taught in masonry. Now I want to say this: if you are a mason or have been a mason, and, and you've been hoodwinked, you've taken the vows and all the other uh, to other deities, it's very simple. Repent and be baptized. Ask God to forgive you. Repudiate it and ask God to forgive you. So how has Esau taken the land? and destroyed manhood. Well, the man has been bound. By the way, you watch TV and you'll find that the, the male, the white male, is put down always. He's the dummy. Every time. Duh! Maybe what that preacher say, maybe there is a war out there. We're going to go to Matthew 23, 13. Because I want you to know that the Bible teaches that even the effeminate will not inherit the kingdom of God. It says that in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, let alone the homosexuals and the adulterers. Not even effeminate men get into the kingdom of God. Now there, according to Matthew 23, 13, are men, they're Esau, Edom men, who want to destroy manhood because this presents their father's kingdom, Satan's kingdom. There are children of the devil so that it can spread, the matriarchal system can flourish. In my registering home, I'm reading the faces here. Are we in the meat or not? Amen. This is the meat of the Word. Many of you are choking on it right now. Well, get it down. Because if you don't, you're not going to get into the kingdom. This is what it says. We'll read two verses there, verse 13 and 14. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Now, keep that on the screen. I want you to know that this is in Matthew 23, where he calls them the serpents. He does not even tell them to repent. Why? Because they can't. He doesn't say, repent and save yourself from hell. He says, how are you going to escape from hell? These are creatures that are damned to hell. That's the way it is. 
But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you shut off the kingdom of heaven from men. From men. For you do not enter in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you devour widows' houses, even while for a pretense you make long prayers. Therefore, you shall receive greater condemnation. This is part of the sorcery spell casting. They devour what? Widows' houses. And when they can get men to say that they are widows' sons, they are claiming to be part of the widows' household. Does that, you with me? And they can devour that because you've taken away their covering they don't have the covering of, of the Father. He's our strong man in a sense, is he not? They've removed the cover so a, a widow's son is so easy to be preyed upon by the wolves. And so I hope you see that there is a, that's a, a rather major, in my opinion, major revelation of why they would have goddess worship. So you be the widow's son. I am a son of God and my father lives. And when that happens, Satan can, he will try. Don't think you don't come under attack. And sometimes this Jezebel spirit, just like it came on Elijah, I've had to fight it. It's like, I, I give up. I quit. Just let me die, Lord. I've done it. There's nobody left. Nobody cares. <laughs> Anybody ever been there before? And then you say to yourself, get behind me, Satan. I, there's one, you know, why not be one greater than Elisha? It's possible. Elijah was a great man, but Elijah got taken down by that Jezebel spirit. We're fighting a spirit here. Some of you women need to fight it. Because you kind of want the world. And you kind of want Jesus. And you men are so happy not to have the responsibility. You're just happy to be nice guys. So let's get to you nice guys. You heard me jump on the boys here. One thing I've taught the boys, and I taught them out the ranch just last week, I said, I don't ever want you to be nice. You do not be nice, boys. Well, that's why I won't let my children come to your church, Pastor Peters. Because you teach the children not to be nice. You got it. Now, I'm moving to a different part of the sermon. And I don't have a lot of time left looking at the clock. But I'll try to get this out. I want to do the, another untold story here whenever Richard is ready. But I want you to know that if you listen to our broadcast on the 17th, I broadcasted uh, a very important message. I think it was the 17th, about don't be nice. Don't be nice. On the 18th, we had words, uh, command and, and obedience by Howard Freeman, the late Howard Freeman. Words are very important in sorcery and spell casting. The spells are never cast. The sorceries never work without the right words. Now, with that said, I want you to hear... Another untold story that we'll be playing in the future. We'll bring it up about now. It goes on about now. Another untold story, here it comes. Another untold story, here it comes. Another untold story that you have not been told from. Another untold story dot com. Words are used in spell casting. And the greatest storybook tells us spells can be cast and sorcery deceives. Words are used in spells and sorceries. If you, as a parent, tell your son to be stupid, foolish, ignorant, not knowing, and effeminate, he will tend to obey his authority over him, that is, his parents, subconsciously, if nothing else. Or if you tell him he is effeminate, stupid,